Hello there, my name is Trog, and today I'll be teaching you how to get one of the most powerful and interesting glitches in the original version of the Wind Waker, called Storage. If you have been following along a speedrun of this game and things seem straightforward enough at first, but suddenly you get to where I'm at now and wonder what the heck is going on, this tutorial is for you. In this guide we'll be going over several ways to get storage, an overview of some of its uses, and at the end of this video, we'll go over some advanced methods to obtain the glitch. While there are a few methods of getting storage, the one you'll be using 99% of the time utilizes the Wind Waker. Getting storage with the Wind Waker is a two-step process. The first step to getting storage is getting a Wind Waker dive. Now, a Wind Waker dive is a state where Link will be in the air with the Wind Waker active. There are several methods of getting a Wind Waker dive, but for the moment we'll just discuss the easiest method, and it looks like this. So what's happening here is that we pull out the Wind Waker right before we fully climb up a ledge. For this method to work though, we need to have an object in front of where we climb up, and in this case we have this big boulder here. Now when the camera enters the Wind Waker camera state, it sees that the boulder would end up blocking the camera. To account for this, the game forces Link to turn around 180 degrees, and by doing this, we end up falling off the ledge. So Wind Waker dives like this can be done in a variety of places. Uh, just over here, we have another place to do a dive, just in this corner here. So there are a few things that I should mention before you try this yourself. Uh, the Wind Waker must already be in your hand before attempting to climb the ledge. Uh, the reason for this being that when the Wind Waker is already in your hand, it actually comes out faster, which is important for the dive to come out soon enough. So how do you do this? Well, the most straightforward way is just to pull out the Wind Waker and cancel it. However, for reasons we'll discuss later in this tutorial, you will often want to have the Wind Waker in your hand without needing to enter the Wind Waker state first. To do this, all you have to do is press the Wind Waker button while Link is in the air. It can be done from a side hop, backflip, or you can do it while from a ledge jump. There are lots of places. As long as Link is in the air, it'll work. Another thing to bring up is that this method of getting a Wind Waker dive is usually a two to three frame window. This game runs at 30 frames per second, so that's actually pretty large for this game. And it should be 100% consistent. However, I see a lot of people in the first starting out struggle to get this timing. Now, I've seen some people advocating for mashing the Wind Waker button, however, I strongly discourage this. It makes the timing for the next step of this process, which we'll get to in a moment here, even harder than it already is. For the timing that I use, and you may have something that works better for you, I wait until right before Link is fully standing up from climbing the ledge. In this particular example, this is the first frame where I will get a Wind Waker dive. Here's the second frame and that's the third. All three of those frames work. Now if you're still struggling to get this timing down, you can kind of debug it. So let's say this happens here, where the Wind Waker comes out, but I don't get a dive. So that can mean one of two things. That could either mean that you are late with your timing when climbing up the ledge, or it can mean that you are not close enough when climbing up so that this camera blocking object, such as this boulder here, is not close enough to you. So like in this particular example, no matter how good my timing is, I will never get a dive. And you can actually tell because you can see that the camera is facing the direction I was originally facing. I never got that 180 degree turnaround. So now that I go back here, I will get that 180 degree turnaround and I'll get a dive. Uh, the other alternative thing that could possibly happen to you is that you'll press the Wind Waker button and nothing will happen. In that particular case, it just means you were too early with the timing. The game wasn't going to let you pull out the Wind Waker because you were still in the climbing animation. Just wait a couple frames later. So Wind Waker dives like these can be done almost anywhere. And once you learn some of the advanced dive methods, which we'll discuss later in this tutorial, you'll be able to get a Wind Waker dive almost anywhere that you can use the Wind Waker. I encourage you to experiment and explore and see where you can find Wind Waker dives. They can be done almost anywhere. Because if you can find a Wind Waker dive, then you can get storage. Speaking of which, now that we know how to get a Wind Waker dive, let's discuss the last step in getting storage. 
While we are in a dive, we need to cancel the Wind Waker using the B button right before Link lands on the ground. With correct timing, this is what it looks like. The game has given me back full control of the camera, but I'll still be in the Wind Waker state. And by pressing the B button again, I now have storage. The next time I interact with something that attempts to take control of the camera gets canceled. Now getting the timing of this will take practice. This is a one frame trick. The B button must be pressed three frames before Link touches the ground. And in this particular case, it's on this frame. What this means is that the timing for the button press will depend on how high the dive is and will vary from location to location. So if you intend to do a speed run, this means you'll want to practice each storage location and get used to each individual timing. And that's it. You now know how to get storage. Have fun, explore, and see what you can do with it. Now there are seemingly endless things you can do with storage, but I'll give you a brief overview of some of its applications. By pressing the Wind Waker button, the Wind Waker event will be canceled. However, the camera will still be locked in place. This is what we call camera lock. It's a common misconception to call this particular state storage. However, storage merely describes a state Link is in that will cancel the next event he interacts with. At this point, I've already canceled the Wind Waker event. I've lost my storage. If I were to interact with something else, in this case, which we'll try the sale, it's going to proceed as normal because I don't have storage. The primary use for camera lock is to perform a glitch called super swimming. I will be covering how to super swim in another tutorial, so go ahead and check the description below for a link to that. But for now, in basic summary, by entering the water and holding up on the control stick, I can start gaining massive amounts of negative speed, and by releasing the control stick, I can then use this to traverse the ocean with ease. Another very common and powerful use of storage is to cancel the chest opening animation. Once we attempt to open this chest with the power of storage, we have now entered a state called chest storage. In this state, Link's collision detection has dramatically changed. The game now treats his collision as if he were a point object, and this allows us to do many game-breaking skips and tricks, like climbing up walls or squeezing through seemingly impossible sized collision. Another thing to note with chest storage is that, as you may have noticed, we have yet to receive the item in the chest. Once the chest is unloaded, either through entering a loading zone, or in this case leaving Dragon Roost Island Quadrant with the help of cheat codes, the game will proceed to give us whatever was in that chest. In this case it's 200 rupees. There's one important thing to remember, however, when using chest storage, and that is what happens when I save and quit. Well. I'm unloading the chest, so I must get the rupees, right? Well, no. The game gives the rupees to the next time Link is loaded. In this case, we have Link on the title screen loaded, and the rupees are therefore given to him. Assuming you aren't playing a joke category, this is something you will want to avoid in many cases. So instead of save and quitting, what we can do instead is utilize a death warp. A death warp has all the same effects as a save and quit, but we avoid loading Link on the title screen, and therefore we can get the item that we need. The last thing I want to bring up is talking to actors, like the King of Red Lions here. Well, as you might expect, his text will be cancelled. However, and perhaps surprisingly, the next time I trigger an event, such as pulling out the Wind Waker, his text suddenly appears. At the top of the screen, I'm showing the address for whether or not storage is active, with zero meaning no storage and one meaning storage. And as I mentioned earlier, we no longer have storage because I already used it to cancel the actor's text event. The amazing thing, however, about text storage is that the moment we complete the text, the game gives us back storage. The reason this happens is because the game is assuming we are talking to the King of Red Lions, and that the camera is locked. Upon closing the text box, the game attempts to end the camera event, and because we already have full control, we end up getting storage. With text storage, we have the power to decide when and where we reactivate storage, which can lead to many useful tricks and glitches, a few of which we'll get to later. The one thing I should mention, however, about text storage is that the King of Red Lines is actually a pretty unique actor, 
He's always loaded no matter where the camera is. However, if I were to store this guy's text here and then face the camera away from him after closing the text. I do not get storage. And that's because he's actually unloaded at this point. However, I can reload him by simply rotating the camera back and then I get storage. So this is what we call delayed storage and can be useful in a variety of locations, one of which we'll talk about later in this tutorial. So this tutorial has gone on for much longer than I was expecting. I guess as it turns out, there's a lot to discuss about this fascinating glitch. I'll be continuing this tutorial in part two, and there we'll discuss advanced concepts such as alternative methods to getting wood wicker dives and double storage. Feel free to check the description below for a link to that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section. If you aren't already in the wind wicker speedrunning discord, you will definitely want to join that. There you'll be able to talk and discuss with many people who are just like me that are passionate about this game and its glitches. Uh, you'll find an invite link to the discord in the description below. For now, I hope this has been a help to you. My name is Trog and I will see you next time.